yeah, I'm good. Like, I am royally good with not having Brock Lesnar in AEW. So, we all know Brock Lesnar left WWE officially around August or something like that because he wasn't coming back during the whole virus after he dropped the belt uh, to Drew McIntyre. However, there has been saying that WWE wasn't going to pay him or something. I, I don't know, but like, um, like the thing I heard was that, and I was thinking to myself, why not just terminate, like, Brock Lesnar being removed from WWE's roster because of all the money he was hemorrhaging. I thought, like, it'd be best if he was the one that got terminated from his contract as opposed to the 30 people that were terminated because, really, I'm pretty sure they're making a fraction of what Lesnar makes every time when he shows his face on TV. But, um, now, let's get something straight here. I like Lesnar as a performer. I really like him as a wrestler. However, his business tactics of how he, you know, handles how he works and everything is the problem I have with him. How he has so much ways of getting around everything. How he could basically say, oh, I'm not going to put in the effort to work with this guy because I don't like this guy. That That's always been a rumored thing he's done. Like, he won't put the effort in. And I'm thinking to myself, you have to put that effort in. People pay money to see you. If you're not putting the effort in, why should we care about you? Like, that's one of the reasons why Braun Strowman's match was not as good as it could have been. Because Lesnar didn't want to work with him. He likes working with the smaller guys. But I'm thinking like when you work, when you do this kind of business, especially when you're a part-timer, which has become a loaded word nowadays because uh, people, when everyone hears the word part-timer, they're thinking Lesnar and The Rock. But when it comes to The Rock, The Rock actually has a reason not to go ahead and do the work that WWE, that WWE makes all the other guys do because, well, The Rock's done his deeds, like Lesnar. However, The Rock has the reasoning of, I do all this Hollywood stuff, so I have to go ahead and not put, so I can't really come onto every show. But, The Rock did show up a lot during his reign, and he had an excuse not to show up a lot. Whereas, whereas Lesnar, he doesn't, like being full time, apparently, that's always been the rumor theory that he doesn't like being a full time guy. Which I was like, then, then why are you here? Because if that's the only reason, like, like if, if if there was the, if he had like a like the Undertaker, like he has a reason not to work as much as he used to, where he had wear and tear from thirty years of wrestling. So he had a reason not to show up every week after a certain time has passed. So, yeah, what was Lesnar? He could probably like. Here's the thing: when, when like I have no problem with him doing part time stuff. The problem I have is when they give him a title and he's gone for like sixty percent of the reign, and the forty percent, it's like it's not even that good. Like forty percent, the forty percent is cut down to twenty. It's cut down by half because the other 20% is either him just standing around letting Paul Heyman do the work, or the other 20% is when he does the matches. And maybe a small gripe of a percentage when he has to beat get beaten down or put someone or get or beat someone up. But that's mostly the stick that Brock Lesnar has done with Paul Heyman in the last several years, which got routinely stale for me. Like there was nothing left to accomplish with Paul Heyman and Lesnar being a do, being their duo now, Paul Heyman's doing this stuff with Roman, and I'm enjoying every moment of it. That's a new layer of uh, of character to Heyman, and and gives him something new to do with new material. Whereas he just has to hype up Brock Lesnar and hype up his opponent, only for Lesnar to beat them down. Now, why is there a whole talk about AEW wanting Brock Lesnar? Um, uh, well, I don't know. Like, there's been a huge talk regarding Lesnar. And his free agent stash because he's no longer signed with WWE. He's kind of like, oh, uh, we'll call you if we need you, but we're going to terminate the contract, so to speak, and we'll have a promise with you later down the road. So, here's the thing I'm a little worried for. There has been rumors going around that a tug of war could break out between WWE and AEW for the Beast Incarnate. And here's the thing. 
even if you had fans, even if you sold out arenas, AEW did not have does not have the kind of money, even with the con's bloated budget. Like oh god. So I, I had this talk with somebody regarding Brock Lesnar. Um, let me find the uh, tweet because it was a while back. It was a few days ago. Um, and, and, you know, Twitter moves very, very fast. But I seem to recall saying that, yeah, it, the big reason is is the CODs, while they have money and whatnot, they should be better off investing it in veterans who will not go ahead and be hemorrhaging more out of it than uh, actually making it because that's what honestly I see Lesnar being he hemorrhages more money than he saves for the company for, for any company really like this is what this is what I talked to with somebody when Fight TV posted saying would you like to see Brock Lesnar eventually return to WWE and one of my buddies on there Dynamite Download check him out Said no, I like him in AEW, and I wrote, "Nah, Brock Lesnar would be hemorrhaging money than bring than more than bring enough in to recoup the cost." And then he responded, "Without fans, Brock makes no sense for any company has price tag." Unfortunately, love the guy, but that's probably the truth. Then I responded with, "Even with fans, Lesnar probably will probably want some assurances and a steep price tag with bonuses." I know the cons, con are rich, but that money is better off investing with legends. Slash veterans that will use their knowledge and talent to teach and pave the way for future gener- to the future generations, which is Sting and whatnot and all those other guys. I SCU's a bunch of veterans, so I said they'd be better off investing in those kinds of wrestlers instead of you know who could still do a huge, who could still work full time or at least the schedule that AEW provides. Lesnar is a very steep price tag. He, he let's be honest, he could come in. Breaking views, I get that. He really can. But my problem is, once again, he's probably not worth the risk of hemorrhaging. Because that because Lesnar asks for a lot of money. And if you add in his part-time system, he'll probably demand if AEW were to give him what he wanted. Freaking worth it, in all honesty. It, because Lesnar is is kind of a huge price tag. So, yeah, I, I feel like it'd be best if you either invest it in the veterans and legends who will come in and help put these guys over as opposed to having just one super mega guy who will be bleeding out more money for the, comp- for the AEW brand than bringing more money in. Especially now with the pandemic and everything, which could be coming to an end as early as 2021, uh, with fans' attendance still unsure in the future, it feels like it would be too much of a too much of a big waste of money if you brought Lesnar in now. If AEW gets enough money vets investments in later down the road and can find a proper balance, because let's be honest, as much as I like to say Brock Lesnar hemorrhaged more money from WWE. That w- that didn't hurt them. Let's be honest. That didn't hurt them until the pandemic hit because they had to let go of 30 people even though they could just let go of one guy that would have saved a ton of jobs that didn't want to end. And as much as people like to bring up the whole, oh, well, these guys want it out. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, then why not just ask them if they want out instead of, you know, doing the unexpected firing where they couldn't plan things out. So... Yeah, Lesnar in AEW, I'm good. I am really good not having him there. I really don't want to see AEW go out of business because they had to accommodate the steep price tag for Brock Lesnar. Like, yeah, Brock Lesnar could do a whole lot of dream matches and work with guys he's never worked with before and probably do some new material or refresh his character up a bit like he was back when he was full-time when he did the sombrero entrance. Uh, it's hilarious but if he if he wants to work part-time though that's that's going to be the biggest problem in my in my view, viewpoint other than his steep price tag like could i would i want him to wrestle kenny omega oh hell yeah i would love to see kenny omega fight brock lesnar one-on-one for the AEW world title but is it worth that cost it could probably 
Like, if AEW was at WWE's financial level, okay, maybe I could buy into the idea that Brock Lesnar would go to AEW. Would I think he's actually going to go there? Like I said, it only depends if the price tag is very freaking steep. But that that's the big thing. Could AEW risk that money where they could either invest with Lesnar, get a whole bunch of viewership, but risk having to let people go if, if it blows back in their faces, or would it be better off investing in veterans and legends who will come in, help put these people over, and if they're healthy enough, they could work with these guys right, and put them over, whereas Lesnar would be like, uh, I get to pick and choose my battles, essentially. So, yeah, and and, you, and like I know AEW has long form storytelling structure, but like Lesnar, they have to plan things way more in advance with Lesnar because originally the WWE system with Lesnar was like we had to plan these storylines and potential routes months and months and months in advance before we bring him back to work with anybody. Like the CM Punk storyline he was were doing, apparently that was planned months ahead of time. So this was like during after a little bit after WrestleMania. And the story didn't happen until the summer. So they would have to plan more so and have a new challenging range when it comes to coming up with ideas for Lesnar. So, yeah. Would it be awesome to see Lesnar in AEW? Of course. But would it be really worth the risk of the money rise right, in business sense? Probably not at this time. I feel like it's not a good idea. Maybe one day, maybe not, maybe never. If Lesnar's good, like, it, it especially Lesnar has to, if Lesnar wins the title, like, this is my thing. If he won't, if he just did big time matches on a part time level, fine. But when he holds that title, he should at least defend it every month at a pay per view event. At least at AEW, they have a re or, or do it on a special dynamite episode. Like, at least defend the title once a month. That That's all I want. That's all I really want. He could show up on via satellite. He could show up backstage. He could show up and whatnot. He doesn't have to wrestle every single freaking week. But he can at least defend the title at least once a month. Build someone up. Build people up. up to build up that line so they can fight Lesnar. And see if they can put the get, get over even in defeat. And that's about all I have to say. So this was the Wrestleverse everybody. New Year Reality Wrestleverse. Uh. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check things out, check out my other channels. Those you know, Pop Culture Omniversa may be launching in December, late December, or will launch in early January. I'm looking forward to talking about all that with you, talking about all things pop culture, and I'm looking forward to talking more, and stay tuned for more, or I'll see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Peace.